Okay, good evening. Hmm. So, <clears throat> uh, so today I'm gonna give a little bit ex uh, explanation because uh, somebody uh, asked some questions uh, from America, and uh, and to add on to that, then I'm also going to give a little bit of uh, explanation on. Uh, A little bit of explanation on the custom and the tradition of the reason behind one uh, why one needs to request for teachings. <coughs> <coughs> so, uh, traditionally and uh, rightfully speaking. Uh, the Lama on the Buddha, the Buddha and the Lamas are actually uh, they actually don't teach without being requested. Yeah. And uh, this was uh, cited by example from Lord Shakyamuni Buddha himself uh, over uh, uh, the once the first uh, time that he showed it was. Uh, after he showed that he attained enlightenment and awakening, he did not teach. He kept quiet and did not teach. Until after some time, 49 days, uh, then when Brahma and Indra came forward to request for teachings of them, which he accepted, uh, uh, and upon... Uh, receiving the offerings from Lord Brahma and Indra, uh, did the Buddha himself uh, agree and started to turn the wheel of Dharma. The second time, which was shown uh, by example by Lord Buddha himself, was that um, the Buddha did say to Ananda that the Buddha's have totally uh, purified all causes of suffering and have uh, no more causes for uh, no more no more causes for uh, suffering and no more results of suffering and the Buddha only worked for the benefit for all sentient beings and he actually said this. Uh, three times to Ananda uh, when he was old and at that time Ananda somehow because of the obscurations of course some texts uh, as according to the Mahayana says that Mara Mara went to cover the ears of uh, Ananda so that Ananda could not hear because usually when uh, Lord Buddha would say something like that then Ananda would usually would re uh, ask ask a question but the Buddha said that three times and Ananda himself kept quiet. <coughs> himself he kept quiet and so uh, Buddha thought that since uh, Ananda did not request uh, and so uh, did not request and so uh, he agreed to the request of Mara, uh, Mara's request for Buddha to leave this world. After Ananda did not request the Buddha to live long and turn the wheel of Dharma. So that after that was Mara came to request uh, the Buddha to, to manifest passing away. And so Buddha agreed to manifest passing away. And, <coughs> and so, uh, therefore, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha himself uh, also did himself also showed this path that that one needs to uh, that that one needs to uh, request uh, for request for teachings and then one needs to make offerings for teachings and so therefore uh, the request 
was a, is a very important. So without the request and the Lama, uh, the Gurus and the Buddhas will not give teachings. <coughs> and so do not assume that, you know, on, the, on the side of the student, a student must not assume that uh, the Lama will, be, will always be around to give teachings. And it, especially if, if the people start to take the Lama on the Gurus for granted, and uh, not make a, a request and not make uh, long life offerings, uh, long life pujas, and so then the, the, there is no necessity for the Lama to manifest to stay in uh, this place or stay in this or stay long in this life. Of course, the greatest offering is the offering of practice. That's why, uh, that's why in the teaching before teachings. Uh, it is not the offering of buying, it is not the, the object of offering, but it is the, sub, uh, it is the subject of the offering uh, as known as the offering uh, of one's body, speech and mind, which actually boils down to efforts, which actually then boils down to a word that is more commonly used in Christianity and, uh, and Islam, that is actually, uh, which I was thinking about, uh, is the word sacrifice. Okay, so what does it mean to sacrifice? Uh, do Buddhists practice sacrifice? So yes, we practice sacrifice. Our sacrifice is to sacrifice our own time, our own laziness, our own effort. To say that we don't have anger, we don't have laziness, and we don't have, uh, we don't take things for granted, you know, uh, or all the hype about, oh, Lama, please come back, please give teaching, and this and that. But uh, in reality, many people are lazy. So it's just here to uh, just come, take for granted that the Lama is always going to be here, always going to be giving teaching, is always going to be around and stuff like that. So, uh, on, therefore, on the, side of the, on the side of the students, then people start to take very much for granted and very much start to think that, oh, everything is going to be okay. But one thing I'm going to assure you, you just have to relax. Everything is not under control. Everything is not going to be okay. Okay. Who told you everything is going to be okay? Who told you everything is going to be okay? If you came to Dharma to request for everything going to be okay, then you are really dreaming. And you are really uh, absolutely stupid. By now, if you still continue to believe or tell yourself to believe that you are here to practice the Dharma and to come to pray and do some chanting so that everything is going to be okay, you are wrong. Everything is not going to be okay. And relax. Nothing is under control. Everything is impermanent. That was the final teaching of the Buddha. Everything is impermanent. And uh, some people having some pain and some sickness, then after that they say, oh, I want to come get blessing, and this and that, so I don't get the pain. You just think about it, since when, since, when, since time immemorial did our body become more and more strong as we grow older? Our bodies will become weaker and weaker as we grow older. And so, please, uh, <coughs> practice awareness. Practice the awareness that your body is not going to be stronger. Your body is only going to grow older and everything is definitely not going to be okay because your body is not going to be okay, it's going to die. And when your body is going, your body is going to go through the process of death. Then, if you are, you have not trained when you are alive, then you are definitely going to panic, and then you are definitely because of your panic, you have a lot of fear, and you have fear and panic, 
everything becomes a confusion and you're definitely going to be, be reborn as a lower realm being. Because uh, that is the life of animals, isn't it? They, they, they lead very instinctive lives. Because everything is a confusion, so they rely everything on instinct. There's no logic or no reasoning available in the animal kingdom. Everything is logic and emotional. Uh, there's no logic, illogical, no logic, uh, emotional. So really there is. If you think that oh, your life is going to be good, your life is going to be long, or you're going to make money, you're going to enjoy, uh, you're going to live a longer life, you can carry on dreaming. When your dream ends, the nightmare will start. When your dream ends, your nightmare will start. Yeah. So this, this is the very essence of the, of the basic of Buddhism of impermanence, okay? And right now, if there's some fear, you start to practice awareness. And then you become more aware and you become more, you want to have this and you want to have that, so you do the practice and stuff like that. But then you feel that things are getting better. The first thing you drop is your awareness. The first thing is that, oh, now I'm better now. No, there's... Uh, I don't need to care so much. Everything is going to be okay. Back to normal. Right? Who said everything is going to be back to normal? Who said everything is going to be? Right? Even if, you're, even if you have a cut and if it recovers, there will still be a scar. There will still be a, there will still be a scar. There will still be a line of join, joining. So where is the sense of normalcy? What is that sense of normalcy? It is a total, uh, it's a total make believe. And I can assure you, if you don't want to start now, and if you still don't want to take your practice uh, deeper, you are just going to your next life. You're going to be born in a place where it's known as the barbaric lands. Even if you have the karma to be born amongst humans, it is not going to be easy. Even you, it's going to be a time where you, you, you're born amongst the people who do not have any uh, faith to the Dharma or to the Buddha Dharma Sangha. And even if you, if you're here, and because of your karmic imprint that you are very attracted to it, it will be so difficult for you to practice. No, it's going to be so difficult for you to, it will be so difficult for you to even hear the word Dharma or to study or to practice or to find people to do it together. That's why, let's just ask, uh, let me ask you, Romania have many Dharma temple. Where you come from? Ha, Hungary. Hungary. Near your house, huh? Where's the nearest? Yeah, okay. How long you have to drive there? Uh-huh. Uh huh. But in the time when you were born, was Dhamma? No. That time, it was very difficult to practice religion at all. No. Yeah. I think the people are very lucky here on this part of the world. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so, if you, any of the people, uh, they are, I don't know whether they are lucky or they are unlucky. If they practice the Dharma, they really have Guru devotion. Some people just want to talk and rely on dreams and rely on prayer and rely on this and that. And it's a total, according, 
I can tell you it is a bullshit. If you try telling my guru that all, all your dream stories and this and that, you're going to get something flying towards you before before you know it. It will hit it will hit you and will awaken you up from your I don't know is it a dream or a nightmare. Okay? Either you are awakened from your dream with a nightmare or you are awake, awakened from your nightmare with a dream. Okay? Some people just uh, practice by observing their dreams. Some people, there's no effort. There's no effort, there's no, no, no effort and some people want to, just want to practice Reiki and, and this and that and go follow their feelings. There's no effort. If only laziness. Happy, go to happy, then go make some effort and everything. My I feel, I feel, and this and that. But what ha what happens? What happens? Only just believing in the feeling and not putting effort and want things to happen. So easy. Okay. There's a. This is not this is not the way of practice. This is not serious practice. Just thinking of coming to the temple to pray. Of course, uh, we created in the past. Those people who created in the past some great merit by having the opportunity to build the temple. Uh, in the next life, yes, they have a very strong merit. But it's like my warning. Is the next life becoming very rich person, but not necessarily having dharma? Yeah. And so, it is a very important that one actually starts to understand the reason behind the offering of mandala. That is the offering of their practice, offering of their to broaden and to ballooning of their inner world. The in, inner world need to open up. Okay? Nowadays, everybody's house is getting smaller. And everybody's house, everybody just buying all the ready-made things because they're just becoming consumers. Of course, the people who, who are doing big business, they want people to be living in the city so that these city people who are pretty, uh, pretty uh, unskilled, they don't know how to do this, they don't know how to do that, they don't know how to cook, they don't know how to, everything needs to rely on other people, then easy to make money out of that, out of them. These people just go to work and, and they don't need to stay, don't need to uh, stay in such a big house and stuff. So everything becomes, yes, they have a nice house, they have a small house, everything is there, but their heart is very empty. Right? So, truly want to practice Dharma. We need to open up the inner space. Some people in the previous life, they did make many mandala offering and this and that. So in this life, they are born with, oh, like, you know, with parents with great estates. Space is no problem. Having stables, having cars and everything. Wow. They, yeah. <coughs> Some people are born to parents who are homeless. Okay? So those who those who keep on taking, thinking that by taking they are gonna be growing, taking they're gonna be gaining this and that. They keep on taking, 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 yes, then in next life then you see they'll be reborn as the those people who are pretty homeless and not have anything. Everything that's gonna be the only thing about taking not that the karma forced them to, to karma forced them to be poor, but because you are so used about taking, so next time you just continue to take, then you're not gonna have anything. You just live your life going to become like always rely upon other people's kindness. Right? Or another way, they become so used to becoming like that, then they become uh, pretty much like uh, uh, people who do not know how to uh, Contribute. They just their mind is just thinking about uh, taking and enjoying, uh, not working. Okay, so yes, in this uh, human world, human existence, 
there is a happiness and there is a suffering. There is an equal amount of happiness and there is an equal amount of suffering. So therefore, it is the best way to practice the middle path. It is the best way by reflection and by by reflection and by organization. It is very important to observe and practice the middle path and not to become extreme. How how one's outer world is will influence how one's inner world be, inner world to be, right? And how one's inner world is will also ultimately affect how one's outer world to be. <coughs> Those people who who don't have anything, the first they want the the uh, the first house they buy small house. Then of course then the small house they are. They, they, they buy according to what, what their condition already is. But when they buy something, then they start to, maybe they start to renovate, they start to do some kind of uh, repair work and this and that. Then how the original place is, according to their mind, will manifest it out to be. Right? So this is what ordinarily people call them ideas. Ideas and uh, ideas to to renovate and ideas and design. Okay? <coughs> and so, uh, inside, in the mandala offering, it is, we are talking about space, this ground, having vast grounds, great estates, anointed with perfume, with growing with wild flowers, Right? Who can you let into this space? Similarly to, who can you let into your house? Do you allow people to come to your house and enjoy your house with you? Or do you have a nice house and everything, but your house is only exclusive for you? You don't invite people to your house. You don't like to, you don't like to share your house and share your ideas and share what your, your belongings. And so, ordinarily, many people will just think about, uh, will just think about buying a very nice house, and then after that, then they just, they just want to enjoy their own, their own house, or their own space. That's why everybody wants to have their own room, and it is their own uh, time and space, and nobody's supposed to be, nobody's supposed to go there. And they don't like people. And it's all these are the signs of deep insecurity, and all these are the signs of. These people not having space. These people not having space inside their hearts. Inside their mind. And so, these people like to buy small house, small flats, small everything small. Just nice for themselves. Everything just enough, enough. Minimalist, some people even say. But, they say, oh, they got their own reasons, nobody will come and this and that. So that's the thing. Price versus value. Many people are, have lost the value of human touch, human contact. And only think only about themselves. And therefore, even if, even if they go to work and they have colleagues and friends, they also don't dare to they also don't dare to open up and they are also very afraid and they are also thinking uh, what other people will think, what other people will do and they are always thinking about themselves, uh, must protect themselves, must if not other people will hurt them or they, uh, people will take my ideas and this and that. So we must change, we must change. If it's not going to be you, then who? If it's not going to be yourself, that is there to share the ideas, it is there to influence other people, then the world will never change. It must start from somewhere. It must start from oneself. Okay? Ordinary, ordinary, beings, ordinary beings will never want to do this. Never. They will only think about themselves. They will only think about 
many other things that is only going to be beneficial to themselves or to their own people or to their own friends. And so this, this, this practice is mistaken. And so, if people are behaving like this in uh, spiritual places or religious places, you must learn, you must practice patience because you must see that these people, because they are in need of religious practice, they are in need of spiritual cultivation, that's why, but yet they, have, they know the knowledge, but they have not digested the knowledge. They have not, therefore, if one has not digested the food, one has not benefited from the food, from the nutrition from the food. And so, as some people would say, uh, a person is weak and so therefore the, cannot absorb the medicinal, the medicinal uh, substances or cannot absorb the tonic or cannot absorb the nutrition from the food. Okay? So, we, it is uh, important that from our side that when we say uh, how to practice patience how to have patience uh, we must first not to know how to have patience okay or, or why to practice uh, or why must not not to know how to practice patience or how to have patience or how to cultivate patience but why why we need to be patient Instead of looking for the how to, it's like how to cook. How to cook is not important. We must know why we need to eat. Right? We must know why we need why we need to eat cooked food. And from there why we need to eat nutritious food and then maybe from there from the basics then after that you got know why why we like more tasty food. Okay? So, it's not a matter. It always, always comes back to the point. Is it a matter about... Is it a matter about... Uh, must have patience? Okay? It's not a matter of must have, must have patience. I feel we must take a few steps back to say why we need to have patience. Why uh, would other people appreciate patience? Would you appreciate other people to be patient with you? So this is a more important way of thinking when we say <coughs> how to have patience rather than people say how to have patience. Because there's no way to have how to have patience. You, whatever method, there will always be justification. Whatever the method, there will always be justification. All right? There will never be a one true correct answer that will bring benefit for all beings. So better to now we take a few steps back and say, why we need patience? Why do you want to be receive patience? That is more important. When you can answer that question yourself, you would try different ways and means to manifest patience for others. And you'll be nice to others. And other people ultimately, when you make mistakes or when you have some, are tired or have something, we all will make mistakes. We all will grow old. We all will forget. We all will have uh, ups and downs. We all will have difficult situations. Let's not have the word problems in our vocabulary. We all will have difficult situations. And when we are faced with uh, challenges, but if our daily life, we have always tried to understand why other people need patience and why we ourselves need patience, then, then definitely other people is going to be very patient with us. 
And not only just patience, support will come. Support is a very important. Nobody can be, nobody can be doing well alone. Nobody can be an island. Okay? So if there's some thought about, oh, maybe I don't know whether I, it is time for me to practice Dharma, if it's time for me to take refuge, if it's time for me to study, it's time for me to receive teachings, that is because they have not yet sacrificed themselves. They're still thinking only themselves. This is so much, there's no space for others. These people who only think about themselves, they don't know how to sacrifice themselves, they will never have a renunciation. Without renunciation, without sacrificing themselves, they will, they will never have space for somebody else in their world, in their life. These people will only keep on talking about how, how I suffer in the past, how I difficult to make money, how I help other people, how I this, how always talking about themselves. How I was, uh, I helped this who and who, how that person come and thank me, how I, and this came on talking about themselves. This is also because they did not sacrifice themselves. If you do not practice sacrifice of your own self, your own time, your own space, your own self, your own time, and your, your, yourself have uh, the, your own space is become so tight, there's no space for some, anybody else, much less even if you believe in God. Even God cannot go inside because you don't allow God to go in. in for us, we don't say, there, there's no space for you to have any Dharma in your life. There's no space for Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, or Guru in your life. You don't even sacrifice. You don't open up. That's why when they say, uh, a classic case is some people who who don't talk. They think that oh, there's nothing to say. Actually, it's not a matter of nothing to say because they have not sacrificed themselves, their own ideology, their own idea about their own self, their own self, maybe their own pride, maybe their own insecurity. It doesn't matter. They need to sacrifice that. Then, that is truly what we say, the cultivation and the practice of renunciation. So, it is not that Buddhists do not practice sacrifice, <coughs> but the sacrifice is not in the manner of killing or sacrificing others, but the sacrifice about their own idea, that only their idea will work. Only their personal idea will work or only their personal method will work. Not listening to other people. Only have a one way, one mind, one way track. And so then this becomes dangerous. Right? How, how do we know that this is a... <coughs> how do you spot somebody who is like that? You want to know? You want to know? Yeah, look in the mirror. Everybody is like that. Number two, this person would have a very salesperson, I would call salesperson personality. Once he or she think that is the way to go and then will never take into consideration about other people anymore. That is the way to go. Just go, just do it. Just do, just keep on just doing and doing and doing. In another words, I say whether I want to use this label or term as salesman or sales salesperson pers sales personality, I also can change it the other way round. Okay. I want to let's give it another way. It's called another word or label is called Obsessive compulsive behavior. Right? And everybody 
who do not let go of their past experience, who do not let go of their how they think things should be or how it happened, and they always cry when they think about last time, they are actually suffering from obsessive compulsive behavior. Do you realize that? Do you realize that now? Anybody who is because they're obsessed with the past. They're holding on to the anger, holding on to the bad experience. Then it's obsessive. They're obsessed with how other people say the bad thing to them, wrong thing to them, or they're not at the right place, not at the right time, and this and that. This is obsessive compulsive. And in other words, if you found a guru and your guru give you advice and you don't follow, then it's also obsessive compulsive. Because you only believe in yourself. There is no sacrifice on your own side. That means if you like, you come. You don't like, you don't come. There is not a sacrifice of every week at this time, at this place, everything else we drop. We just come and we put ourselves to, together in that situation to cultivate. It is a kind of self-love. Because that how the rest of the week, do we really do it? Every day, do we really do it? Frankly speaking, I know it is no. If you all have really have done, results will be vastly different. It's just, I wait for you, you wait for me. Or at least everybody just try to look nice together. Right. So when we talk about renunciation, when we talk about compassion, <coughs> how to do, want to develop that, just now I was saying, how to develop patience. So I already said, don't think about how to develop patience, but rather why you need patience. Then the same question somebody asked, how do, how do we develop said so don't develop don't know how to develop compassion understand first feel in your in your own gut your own soul why do you need compassion do you appreciate compassion would you want compassion would you need compassion would you need a helping hand would you need someone to listen to you to be compassionate to you? Would you appreciate help? And if other people were to offer you help, are you generous enough to receive? Not just giving, eh? receive. Because sometimes it's your own pride that you cannot sacrifice it away and your ego you don't want to receive help from other people. You're the pride. Ah, this is your thing. I don't need. I don't need this. Your things. I can have everything myself. Yeah, my my own, my own life, my own house, my own method, my own style. Then people come and people do things. This uh, who's suffering? Who's suffering? Right. Some people are like so used to, so so used to being stuck in the mud that they, they've gotten comfortable with the mud, and so they th they think that that is the way to go. That is okay. They think and they feel that is the way and that is okay. But then it's not okay. Not okay. Why? Because you always will need other people to encourage you. You always will need other people to this and that for you. 
But you never expect that other people can do some things you think that you can never do. For example, some people will always think that who always think that they are poor, they will always be poor. Because they will never imagine themselves to be able to to do well. They will never be able to imagine themselves to be able to earn more, to make more money. And even if they have struck lottery, they will still become poor. Because they will have listened to everybody else who have been eyeing on their money, right? And make them spend and buy. They earn all their commissions and then and then after that they will give you all the other advice so-called specials. Uh, I'm here to help you. In the end, you'll become poor again. No? What is the poor man's mentality? Do you know? Do you want to know? Huh? Greed. When a poor person, because they don't have this and that, always want to take and take and take. Greed. So what is the best way to lure uh, uh, to, to, to lure a poor person by giving free things? So when you see whether I can see it as this person is financially poor or I can I easily change it around and say this person is greedy. Right? It's greedy. Not wanting to work for things or only want to take things. Is greedy. And even if that person may become wealthy or may become rich, but that person may not want to work so hard for things, and that person also just want to come and take things, it's also greed. Not that you cannot afford to. It's just that you are. And we are very, very attracted to freebies. Right? And so... People tell you, say, oh, there is a free this and free that, or they give a special discount, special extras, and all the discounts and extra later on, because of, you want more of this, then you, you pay a little bit more of this, you pay a little bit more of that, then after that, you know. Before you know it, you lost 20,000. Then they say, wow, now you owe this, now you, you have this. Maybe, maybe a very good example is maybe timeshare. Okay, a good example. Oh, you know this beautiful, uh, this beautiful hotel. You know, every year you can come. There are so many of this and that, and wow, you pay this amount only like this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna pay this and that. Then after that, you know, you can always come. It's very cheap. You know, uh, they use things like very cheap. You always come and use all these things is yours. That actually, <laughs> it's just a dream. You know. It's just a dream. Try to go listen to more sales talk and go meditate when you're listening to sales talk. Really. I always, my enjoyment, I go listen to sales talk. Wow. <whistles> Unbelievable. Oh, they say and they're so good. Wow. Wow. Right? And then reality sets in. When you say no, they treat, they give you a black face. Yeah. They are only there for your money. Do they really truly care? Right? Truly care? Those who, who truly care, maybe your grandmother, grandfather, your parents or whoever, they truly care for you, but do you really care for them? No. You just abuse them lah. Since they're always there for you, don't care. Same. Do you really care for your guru? No. F him lah. Right. He'll always be there man. Got, sure, got people look after him. Got look after temple. There's no need to care so much. Right. How many people really care? No. That's why... I said before in Chinese, 人是贱的. Treat the student nice is no good. Treat the student too good is not necessarily a good thing. Correct? See, now you are not comfortable. 
you are used to maybe lama now oh rumje now is very kind very compassionate this and that right. maybe for the next year anybody who is sick and dying don't come see me whoever come see me if they are sick and dying let them be sick and let them die Good idea. It's their karma. Sure, going to die anyway. Sure, going to be sick anyway. Since they only they only want to come and test, ma. Test whether your, the prayer work. Right. Let's not do any prayer and let their karma ripen on themselves and see what happens. That's what Theravada literally is, you know. There's no prayer for the dead. Whatever you do is accordingly, you know, you, you, you ripen and everything. We just do, do, do things, offer to Buddha Dhamma Sangha and everything, then dedicate marriage, that's all. There's no, no salvation prayers or, or pujas to be a benefit for others. In Theravada, that's not there. That's why uh, you know, you must know, Buddha allowed it to happen. Angulimala was beaten to death. Right? You know Angulimala? Does this Buddha have one great disciple? When he was, uh, when he was uh, following, but he followed a wrong teacher before becoming a Buddhist. And the teacher told him, if you want enlightenment, you must cut off 1,000 little fingers. Okay? Kill 1,000 person and cut off their little finger and strand them together and wear around your neck. Okay? Yeah. And because he was very intelligent and he was everything, so he could manage to... And, then, and, and he killed 999 people. And the mother... And the the king set off the set off the army to try to catch this person to kill him, and so the mother was very worried. The mother said, "I want to go and advise my son to run." Okay, but Buddha knew. Buddha knew. Buddha said, "It's a five uninterrupted bad karma if one kills one's own mother." And so what happens? Buddha went forth to <coughs> appear in front of Angulimala. And so the Angulimala would say, Oh, now it's easy. This is the last person I'm going to kill. Then I'm going to chop off his little finger and I have 1,000 little fingers. Means Angulimala means lit mala of little fingers. So that is his name, Angulimala. Yeah. And so no matter how fast he ran to chase after Buddha, he could not kill him because... Buddha was luring him away because the mother, his Angulimala's mother was trying to go and tell him, run. But Angulimala would have killed his mother for her little finger. He already just want, thought of wanting to become a god, to be free by listening to the wrong guru. So Buddha saved him. So Buddha taught him. Buddha changed him. And he, uh, he became an arhat. But Buddha could not, Buddha did not stop. Same as Buddha also did not stop the Sakya clan from being exterminated. Now, I think, what is the term called? Uh, what is this English term called? Genocide, is it? Genocide? Another group of people killing another group. Yeah, genocide. So, some other king came to kill off all the Sakya people. The Sakya capital was burned down. Right? Buddha could not, did not stop. Could not stop and did not stop. And at the same time, Buddha also could not stop and did not stop the death of Angulimala. So let's just say from now onwards, anybody who got cancer, who got sick and, 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 and everything, don't come and see me. Let them 
suffer their own result of their own cause and condition and effect. Right? Good. I, I will teach them the methods of purification, but don't come see me. I will not heal you, nor will I come and lift a finger. You just suffer your own. It's time for you to die, you die. Eh? Don't I revive you already? Still don't do much practice. Eh? Huh? Some of you supposed to have bye-bye a few years ago. Fair, right? You don't look after your guru. You don't make offering to Guru, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Everything you just think, your mind becomes polluted towards, instead of being just a moment thinking of one's guru, the mind becomes pure. But no, this moment thinking, even their mind goes crazy, but think of the guru still becomes wild. Means your mind, you did not put the effort to, we did not put the effort to swallow the pill of truth. We didn't do any sacrifice on our own side. Yeah. Only thinking about after that, say thank you, maybe give some money offering and that's it. Worse than the, you, how you treat a doctor. Worse than how you will treat a public toilet. Worse than how you will treat a prostitute. Yeah. This, is, this is currently like this. Samsara, like this. So then what is compassion? What is, what, how, how, do you want, how do you want to have compassion? You tell me, how do you want to have compassion? It's not that I'm not compassionate, but how do you want to have compassion? How do you want to receive compassion? Right? However you want to receive compassion, you feel that and you give that compassion to other beings. This is the only way you can generate that real compassion. Not fake practice. Not fake compassion. So other people, oh yeah, just give a nice smile. Oh yeah, yeah. Then after that, just get over. Yeah. I'm not just saying, like in America, I, I learned this term. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Alright? They're not just saying. Yeah. It's a hint, an open hint telling. So it's the same. Same for me to you. Right? If you are sick, you come and tell me, I'll just say, this is your karma, go wait for you, the time, your time coming, go wait and die. Or do you want to say, oh, unfortunate, then this karma, this thing ripen on you. Then maybe if you want me to give you advice, do you want me to give you some words of advice, some word of comfort, give you some prayer, some blessing, some dedication, and do some purification practice, everything for you? Which one you like? Which one you like? Huh? No answer, right? Go burn in, burn in hell then. Yeah, because which one you want and which one you deserve is different. Eh? Which one you want and which one you deserve. Right? If you have been a bitch to other people and you have been a bastard to other people, you, you deserve to burn in your own result of how other people would like to treat, to treat you, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not sorry for the bad language. Isn't it? 
right? If you've been bitching other people, you've been scolding other people, you've been, you've been ah, scolding and everything, give face, bullying other people, how do you expect other people to be always be nice to you? Huh? So it's the same. If you want to, if you want to experience compassion, be the compassion you want to receive. Right. Why am I saying this to you today? Because I need you to jam break in certain aspect of your life. Because you know, you know what you don't want. You know what you desire and greed for. Okay? But you do not know what you need. You don't dare to know what you need. You're only looking for money. You think I already gave an explanation, right? Those who leave money behind for the children are leaving behind problems for their descendants. Why? I explain. Because your money is your karma. Maybe you have your good karma to, to enjoy all this. But let's say you have the good karma and you have a lot of extra money but you don't want to do good deeds and when you die, what happened? That, that money become your source of, of attachment and anger and everything. So all your negative energy goes to pollute the money and then goes to the children. The energy attracts Energy attracts same kind of energy. Then the children will, 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 will quarrel or fight and edit this and that over the money. So what should we do? We should do use whatever you can, do whatever you can and dedicate marriage for the ten directions, for all beings and also for your children and your descendants. If you have a student, you're a teacher, you should de dedicate the marriage to your disciples or your students. If you're a teacher, your students. If you're a parent, you should dedicate also to your children and your grandchildren. Right? Then this becomes meaningful. Not holding on to money and money. You see, holding on to money, but when it comes to Doing good deeds, very difficult. But it comes to enjoying and holiday, wow, very easy. You know, for example, maybe ask you to do donation, $100. Oh, so difficult, this, that. But if we say, go buy some uh, jewelry or buy something branded shirt, $500, no problem, no need to think. Why? Because this thing is going to stay on your body and you're going to look good. It's going to, you have more wind. Right? You say, wow, more branded clothes. You walk, i got wind. Correct? Huh. All this come from the TV advertisement. Television advertisement. Correct? Oh, i got wind. You walk also look more good, more cool and everything. Where does this wind come from? This wind is the karmic wind of the person who created this brand. Of all the people who created the brands, why are some brands better and some brands not so good? You think about it. Why are some brands famous and some brands not? There are so many banks. Why are only some banks famous and what not? some banks not? Since everything is supposed to be the same, isn't it? Right? If everything is supposed to be the same, then everybody should be liking to eat the same food. Everybody's shit is going to smell and, f uh, and everybody's fat is going to smell the same too. But it doesn't. It doesn't. So, it is a very important that you must start to, that we must really start to think on, of the reason why rather than how. When you want to have how, you are looking for instant gratification. 
how to do it, so how do I get something? Always understand why you need something. Why other people need this? Why do we need this? Why? Not because, don't do anything because somebody say. And don't do anything because it's for convenience. But do and share and, and open up, give the best. Give your best in a place that truly make you honour Buddha's teachings by your effort, by your sacrifice, by your renunciation and by your, with your body, speech and mind, your experience, your skill, your past experience and your skills, right? And your network and your Exp uh, uh, and your uh, maybe your I don't know how to say your expertise to, to do well this is your offering of body, speech and mind this is the meaning the meaning of offering a mandala this is the meaning of offering of the mandala before and after teaching that the teaching must once you add salt in, once you add salt in the water, or once you add a drop of milk to a black coffee, it's never going to be pure black. Okay, so your own obsessive compulsive behavior, you must agree to sacrifice it out. So does it mean you cannot love with passion anymore? No. It's not that. It just means that when you're in love, when you are at that moment, you really enjoy. You really enjoy, you really, you know, it's like you really go on a date with your friend or your partner or your husband or your wife, this and that. You, We don't keep on the handphone and and talk to other people, you know, you are there, you are at present, you are present for that moment. And then it leaves on happy memories. None of them say, I'm doing work, I'm doing work, Aaron is, uh, uh, checking email, I'm searching for... No. Many people say this, you know, many people. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, maybe that's why it's, uh, it's a good. Telephone is for making phone call. You want to check everything else, maybe use your iPad or use your laptop. People more believe you. you know? People is more credible. It's more credible. So this is also called skillful manifestation. Skillful manifestation. You see, most, if not most of us, you see, all these things were created by who? by the people who think I is the most important. That's why I call iPhone. <laughs> why not call A phone or Apple phone? Right? Everybody else who wants to write on the success of the iPhone made all their thing look like the iPhone already. But they cannot use the word iPhone. But they don't dare to say ego phone or cell phone. They call cell phone, but not cell phone. Right? Yeah. So, the Western thinking about only for I, for really just about, they call individualism or this and that. It, and all of us, all of us, the whole world, why does it become so successful? Because Everybody has that self-cherishing nature inside us. From beginningless time till now. That just shows that the cause, the cause of our future suffering is so strong. The cause for our future suffering is very strong. 
is not cause for future enjoyment or future success or future uh, something is very strong. No. It's the cause for future suffering is so strong, so unimaginable. That's why everything that is about individual or is about this or is about that will definitely, definitely do well. Right? When people don't have jewelry, they say oh, having jewelry is good. When they have jewelry or many different types of jewelry is good. When there are many different types of jewelry, the next one is not more different kind of jewelry is good. They kind of want, you know, specially designed for you jewelry. Only you have this one. Nobody else will have. <coughs> Correct? Special design. That's why they say, in the past, mothers make clothes for you. Our, uh, 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 for children. Now, children don't know how to make clothes. Right? They only know how to buy clothes. Then you are sick and tired of buying clothes, where do you go? You go tailor clothes. Correct? Huh? Because it's very personalized service. Right? It's personalized service. So what is that? That personal touch, personalized service. What does it mean? What does it mean? Everybody wanting to... You want personalized service? You like? You like personalized service? You like, right? One by one, going to get it from me later, queue up. I give personalized, personalized caning. Uh, it's personalized from me. After I cane you, I will sign on you. I take a permanent marker pen, no? I'll sign on your... Sign on your shirt. Right? It's personalized service, right? Personalized blessing. Everyone is different. Right? You go back oh, with uh, some cane mark. Special. Some I will use mala, some I will use tax, some I will use ruler, some I will use cane or feather duster. Like that. Very personalized service. Right? So you see. <coughs> This is what I mean when we say personalized. What does, what does it bring about? Wow, special, special. It's, it just brings, shows out how much more suffering we are going to be needing to go through to, and how much more sacrifice we need to go through. The word sacrifice it's more scary for Buddhists than for other beings, uh, other religion, because other people, maybe they say sacrifice, you can use money to buy something to give. But for us, our sacrifice is, you know it, it's deep within you. Right? Right. You have to offer. When I say, offer your life, you're scared. Oh, I become slave. It's not that. It's offer to the attachment to your current life or attachment to the ideology of you only have this one life only. And it's maybe also offer your selfishness. Offer your life. Not asking you to go and die. So when we say, re when you really want to practice Dharma, we say we need patience. You appreciate patience, right? You appreciate compassion, right? You appreciate space, personal space, right? Correct? Yeah. So all these things, if you appreciate, you have to give. You have to sacrifice and you have to give this space. You have to give the service. And not just talk, oh, I have this, I have that, I know. No, it's not that. Give your service. Don't just happy, happy, turn up. Not happy, happy, don't turn up. This is not correct. There's no discipline. It's only, it's whimsical. What, how would you like if I... Happy, happy, turn up for teaching. Not happy, happy. Not happy, I don't turn up. 
if I should become more like you, then you wake up your idea, right? 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 Like I said, I'm too kind to you. I'm too kind to you. You are not kind to your guru. You abuse your guru. You abuse your guru's guru. You abuse the Buddhas. You abuse. You, and you bully the people who are kind to you, who are compassionate to you, who are patient to you. And that is the way how you bulldoze your way. And you say that, oh, I'm, I have no ego. I'm very, I have no ego. I'm very nice and easygoing person when I have things my way. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. When you have things your way, you're always nice and easygoing. When you don't have things your way, uh, situation caused me not to become nice and easygoing. Huh? It's not me. I'm easygoing. Only the situation make me not nice and easygoing. So then there's no practice. At that moment, I felt I could, I could do. At that moment, I felt I could, uh, I could say, I could talk, I could uh, maybe something, do something. And this is not correct. Not, I'm sorry, not correct is not the correct way of saying. Not the beneficial way. It's not beneficial. The purpose of our life is to bring benefit for others and ourselves. Such is the reality that we need to retune our heartstrings. We need to retune our heartstring to, to, to not just think but also to feel like that. Just like, you know, I think car and uh, some, some trucks always need to go for servicing, isn't it? Same. Right? You also need some servicing. You also need regular servicing. You need to get individual personalized blessings. Regularly. Right? If not, it's the same case. Oh, Ramachi is the, doing the Kota Tinggi. Don't worry lah. He'll handle it. When, when it's done, then we go and enjoy. Yeah. Right? Don't worry lah. He will, he will find his way. Let him go and worry about it. Let him go and raise funds. This and that. For that, really, I'm telling you, I really appreciate this Uncle Jimmy Lim. You never see another of my disciple not doing his business, not doing his own job, not doing his own work, every day drying up to Kota Tinggi just to make sure that it is going to be ready for the retreat. And yet, now let's take a look at the other way. How many people really, really think of going for the retreat? They give all kinds of reasons of not turning up. And there are people who are not doing their business at all. Just every day go. For who? For what? For themselves? Or for the guru? Or for the dharma? <coughs> you think, eh? You, you, you just retune your heart. Who going to give him a red packet and say thank you? Every day he go up. So then, this girl say, go help him. You help him? You help him, his business? You helping? Make sure, okay? Yeah. This call, support. Everybody need to help each other. Don't just talk help and all. There are many people every day just maybe just doing nothing, wasting their life away at home, uh, wasting their life away. 
Better they go down there every day, go and help me to make sure the, pe the, the people go and do the work properly, go and help the water, the plants and everything. Right? But nobody, nobody actually bothers. So really, I'm 100% very, not just pleased, but also grateful and thankful for people like Jimmy and Mr. Tan. Why he need to offer a land and become big headache? Every day also he himself business do only half a day and run there every day become like construction for men. For who? For fun? You you think for fun? Huh? The rest of the people, oh just wait. Just wait lah. By the time come we just go enjoy. A good okay, no good complain lah. Huh? So there's really something very wrong in the way people are thinking today. Thinking and feeling. And you actually allow yourself to be like that. That is the most scary and dangerous thing. <coughs> you actually allow yourself to think that it is going to be okay. And that is natural and normal. Or you say, oh, maybe I don't have the money, or maybe this and nobody asks you to pay for everything. What I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know, if a bunch of chopsticks or satay sticks bind together, it becomes unbreakable. Even if everybody were to give some every month, everybody were to give some every month together, it becomes an effort. Everybody can give some money, everybody or can give some prayer together, everybody come together and pray together and practice together, and it becomes purposeful, meaningful. And then that makes our human existence meaningful for other people. I don't know whether my life is meaningful or my presence is meaningful for you here or not. I, I'm telling you very truthfully now. Yeah. Ever since the ever since the live stream come, you you think how many people never come for teaching already? They don't even want to come to the effort to come to the temple. Isn't it? Right? They say, Oh, I can watch later. This some people say, oh, I'm doing business and I can watch later. Oh, they give a lot of excuse and this and that. I rejoice in your marriage in your excuse. But when your, when your marriage run out, I also don't know how to rejoice in your suffering. So carry on, continue to fall asleep, continue to, to don't want to come and just say, don't worry, it's okay. When the time comes, you will know what I mean. We will offer mandala now.